Hello everyone. Um, Phil has asked me to talk about my experiences, uh, what support I received, how, how I found out information I needed for running the business that I'm co-running currently, um, and just seeing if there's any gaps that I've found or any advice I'd give to somebody um, going into growing, I guess. Um, so I, I'll just tell you kind of my timeline of my own history and kind of drop in whatever clever things that I've learned along the way as we go. Um, I started my Soil Association apprenticeship in 2009, having never gardened before in my life. Um, and I pretty quickly fell in love with growing and farming and uh, the local foods and organic movement. Um, I found the apprenticeship was a perfect way for me to learn over two years from scratch um, and then at the end to feel pretty capable, um, at least in the growing sense. Uh, I love the seminars as a baseline for learning and as a way to network and visit other farms and farmers um, who taught me a lot about their different systems just by being on farm tours. Um, and uh, I, I managed to amass a binder full of handouts from all of those seminars. <clears throat> and they're collecting dust under my bed at the moment, but they were really handy the first year or two after I finished my apprenticeship. Um, so those seminars were really helpful. And I can see by the Soil Association website that things have moved on a, a quite a lot since I've left my apprenticeship because the things that I felt were missing seem to be maybe in place now. Um, but I thought what was sort of missing for me was the structure. Um, I didn't really know what I was supposed to have learned um, over the course of things. We just kind of did a lot of work and hoped that we covered everything. Um, and so I guess I would have liked to know a bit better that I was following a structure for, of learning um, for when I was doing the farm work itself. And then the other thing was just um, having help maybe through the Soil Association to set up a mentorship for after I left my apprenticeship to make things easier uh, while I bumbled along for the first couple of years. Um, because at the end of my apprenticeship, I took a big leap up from apprentice to farm manager for a new lottery funded CSA in Norwich called Norwich Farm Share. Um, and they had a consultant grower who was set to mentor me while I made this big leap. But what I know now is that I should have been asking questions about that consultant's own experience, um, which as it turned out was mostly growing uh, field scale strawberries um, in an organic and non-organic setting, rather than um, a mixed vegetable patch market garden um, for a hundred bucks CSA. So I was given a bare field and a tractor in February and was asked to grow enough veg for year-round production with one small polytunnel for a hundred boxes starting in July, um, which was quite huge for me at the time. Um, and here, there was a group of volunteers running the business, none of which were farmers. Um, and with the finances looking a little bit rough from the onset, I left after about five months at the end of July once all the plants were on the ground and said, good luck to you. And they're still running now, so it's, it's worked out. But for me, I, I think I'd say to anyone making a big leap like that is to get a mentor who works on a similar kind of farm and be loud enough for everyone to hear you if you're working within a big group. Um, and demand that they hear you, um, and if you feel at all uncomfortable about being loud enough for people to hear you, then a community-run business might not be for you. Um, so it's about personality fit as well as the skills that you've got. Um, also, if you like spreadsheets or like your crop plans organized, um, then figure out how to use a spreadsheet. Um, it was in Norwich that I used Excel with my techie partner to make a mega spreadsheet that spits out a monthly to-do list like uh, Keith did at Abbey Home Farm. And six years later, I'm still using it, and it's getting easier to do my crop plans every single year. Um, and I guess my recommendations for books for when I'm crop planning would be Jean-Martin Fortier's The Market Gardener and Charles Dowding's The Veg Course, and both of them are quite good for spacings 
um, of crops in the rows and timings and ideas on different kinds of crops to put in to a, a big market garden, varied market garden. So those are both two good books. Um, and I guess in Norwich, I also learned during that really hot, dry season how important irrigation is uh, and never hope for the best in terms of rain, always plan for the worst. Um, and so when I left Norwich, I ended up moving to Devon for a job, and that's where I've lived ever since, luckily. Um, and I worked in a charity that had lottery funding to set up a CSA, but it seemed to have more realistic goals in terms of setting up a CSA. And um, I, I only had a line manager rather than a community group to coordinate with, um, so I thought that was a clever idea. And unfortunately, after I was hired about a month later, there was a company-wide freeze on any spending because they realized that they had gone um, really downhill in terms of their spendings and needed to get a grip on it, and they ended up doing a bunch of redundancies. So for me, the impact for me meant that I couldn't buy any of the equipment that we needed to grow for our hundred boxes. And while the charity survived as an overall business, the CSA was deemed too risky after its uh, funding was over. Um, and unfortunately, during that funding, the last year of funding was 2012, which was the wettest year in 100 years. So I can kind of understand that they were a little bit worried about um, growing vegetables after that summer. Um, so I guess from that, I learned that business-wise, I learned being part of a larger organization can mean you get lost in the shuffle. And farming-wise, I learned how important it was to have polytunnels and any outside growing space where you don't need a mechanical cultivation to prep the beds. Um, and so those were the only place I grew food on that year. <clears throat> um, and then in 2013, I luckily met two local ladies uh, who just secured a small grant to trial their CSA on the Dartington estate called School Farm CSA, and that's where I've been ever since. Um, it was based on an existing organic market garden, and I uh, just jumped up to help them because they were just down the road. Um, and so I worked a little bit with them the first year, and it turned out there was four of us that were ended up running the business, and we met every other week to make decisions about how to run the business, um, and we did all that by consensus. Um, and what was great for me was that we were all trained in veg growing, which made all of the discussions easier. Um, so we were, and we were helped at the beginning um, with a session from the fruit tree business consultancy to figure out which legal structure suited us best. Um, and I spent a lot of volunteer time that first year reading up about legal structures and governance and responsibilities as a director, and learned how to file the paperwork to create our organization as a community interest company. And most of that information was coming out of the Simply series, which you can find online at www.uk.coop. Um, and we also used Kate Collins' book for the business plan part of it, um, and that gave us a template, an easy template to work with and from for creating a business plan. Um, and that year I also led on the crowdfunding campaign, and my tips and tricks are in the Organic Growers Alliance magazine in the winter 2015 issue that's just come out. Um, so you can read about that there. Um, but in autumn 2014, our group was having real relationship problems. Um, we were stuck on whether to expand the farm or not, and we couldn't agree, and we're not hierarchical, so we just all have to kind of keep talking until we make a consensus. Um, and we just weren't getting anywhere, and we're getting really frustrated and a lot of... Uh, a lot of anger and issues were coming up alongside that. So we called in Gareth Davies from Canal Side to come down for a day and help us to decide whether it was a good idea to expand the farm. And so after a day with us, he helped us make that really big decision and that was really helpful. Um, but we were still having problems within the group and there was a lot of hurt feelings and there's just a lot of like junk coming up and it was getting really difficult to work together on the farm and in our group meetings. Um, and we decided to take a day and spend it with a facilitator from the Well and Good Project. And Inez Aponte worked with us for that day and she massively shifted things. Um, she managed to hold us during that process of, uh, of storming, which is uh, what she told us it was. So she kind of normalized it for us. Um, she said that all teams you know, go through this storming phase. Um, 
which is great. And then we also did a two-day training course with Conscious Collaboration, who work with non-hierarchical structures, and that gave us the tools and the structures to make meetings easier and relating to each other much more possible. Um, so it's we've kind of moved past the storming now, and now we're into norming, which is great. Um, and this past year, we've also decided to let go of the accountant who'd been doing all of our accounts and the bulk of our bookkeeping and set up a QuickBooks Online uh, account and take much of the bookkeeping in-house instead rather than paying somebody else to do it. And that's made things on the financial side of the business much easier. And that was a, a recommendation from one of our uh, CSA members who's a bookkeeper um, and suggested to look into QuickBooks Online and we did and yeah it's been really really easy to set up and easy to manage and syncing everything together and it lives up in the cloud so all the different team members are able to access it if they want to. Um, so I guess in all I'd say that I've kind of settled into a farming situation that fits my personality and my skill set and that's probably the most important thing to be looking for um, for any new grower is to kind of find the best fit for you, whatever that happens to be, doing whatever it is, however you want to be a farmer, then you go and find that farm that fits you. And don't be too worried if you have some really hard experiences during the first couple of years because I've had some really crappy years um, and I've still, through it all, I've still been excited about just growing vegetables and doing the work that we do and that's kind of sustained me and I think all of what I've gone through has been a really good learning experience. Um, and so I guess I would just say good luck, grow loads of carrots, um, and if you're ever down in Totnes Way, then give me a shout. Bye.